Hey guys, this is me Rachid Zain and I am back with a new video today. So the problem that I will be discussing today is about dynamic programming. And if you are not aware of this, I already have a playlist dynamic programming tutorial from zero to hero, wherein I try to explain uh, how a beginner should approach dynamic programming. So this video is really nice if you are a real beginner and I've tried to inculcate in this playlist all types of dynamic programming problems and I will keep this playlist updated like I'm adding one more video right now. So this playlist is also having matrix exponentiation and then other problems that uh, are based on dynamic programming and are asked in Google APAC problems or maybe in some code forces contest or CS Academy contest. Then I also have this DP on trees which is uh, based on three lecture series and I think you should watch that if you want to be good at dynamic programming. So uh, the problem that I am talking about today will be based on a matrix. So let's start dive into the problem. <coughs> so uh, we have a matrix of n rows and m columns where n and m both can be up to a thousand and uh, the matrix will have integers in it with any value and we will start from 0 comma 0 which is the start position and we have to finally come at the diagonally opposite end and we can only move right or down and we have to print the maximum sum path that we can obtain so what do i mean by maximum sum path so over here we are at one then we can move to either two or five and when we move to 2, we basically obtain the sum of 3. Let's say we move from here to here. So our sum becomes 3. Then let's say we again move from here to here. So 3 again gets added up, it becomes 6. Then let's say we move here. Then the sum becomes 10. Then we move here. The sum becomes 18. And then we can't go left because the only directions that are allowed are either right or down. So we are forced to move in down direction, 18 plus 12 is 30, and then we finally reach 16, 46, and the sum path is 46 for this path. There can be a couple of other options, like from 1 we can go 5, then 6, then 7, then 11, then 15, then 16, and each path will have a sum path associated with it. And the problem talks about finding the one which is having, not finding the one, but finding the maximum sum that you can obtain by traversing from the starting to the ending. So this is the question and if you are not <coughs> uh, good in dynamic programming or you have just started off with it, it might be a little bit scary for you. But dynamic programming is really easy and how you should approach these kind of problems is or how you should approach dynamic uh, programming problems is very straightforward. You should uh, think of a recursive solution and then optimize it just by using memoization so in this case if we are at this position then we have only two options we can either go to right and reach there or we can go down and reach here but anyways either position we uh, finally get we know that the end goal is to reach over here right so let's say i am at i comma j so from here I can move to i comma j plus 1 or I can go down to i plus 1 comma j and then the goal is still the same that we have to reach the end destination which is diagonally opposite. <coughs> so what happens over here is let this uh, element be a i j and this value be x <coughs> I'm so sorry and let this value be y, the matrix. So what happens is we have a i j, then we if we go to right, which is case one, so a i j plus x, because now we have stepped on x, and now the problem becomes the maximum value that we can achieve if we start our journey from uh, i comma j plus one. If you have watched my videos, I basically use go function. I just like the name. And the case 2 will be if you go down. 
so what do you achieve a i j then you get y and now whatever the maximum value that you can achieve from i plus 1 comma j so you will compare these two values and based on what is the maximum of them you will store that in i comma j and that's a simple recursive solution which will work and what is go ij doing over here is it it's so i'm having this trust on my function go which accepts two parameters the row and column that i'm currently standing and i hope that it will give me the maximum value that i can obtain if i start my journey from this cell okay and we can also get rid of x and y over here and we can uh, so now what the definition of go becomes is we are still standing on i comma j and we are also considering the x value in this and y value in this so uh, to for the base case uh, what i mean to say is go for the last row and end the last column which is the uh, for the end parameters it will be 16 in this case Th that's what i am defining let's just keep it easy so i'm i'm at the end <clears throat> and i want to reach the end the max i can take from there is 16 and in this case i i was at aij and i stepped to right uh, i don't care whatever this value is i am having this trust on the go function that it will just tell me what is the maximum amount that i can achieve uh, if i start my journey from that cell and end to the destination which is this so I'll just quickly go and code this out for you guys. Uh, yeah. So here, as you can see, uh, n I have defined to be a thousand three. Here is the matrix array. Here is the DP array. Let me just also declare a visited array for memoization purposes. If you're not uh, aware of what I mean, just wait for the video to end and you will get it. So in the main function, I'm taking the input over here and then I'm just displaying the matrix and now uh, the answer will be go 0 comma 0 right because we have to start at the 0th row and 0th column and uh, I'm having trust on this function go that it will give me the answer so now we will just quickly implement the go function okay so how will it work mm, int answer equal to 0 uh, answer is equal to max of uh, so aij will always be there right i am at ij i take aij value and then i have a decision of either going right or left or right or down so i will take the value that i can maximize my answer with so if i'm going right the max that i can achieve is i comma j plus one that is the maximum value that i can achieve and if i'm going down this is the maximum value that I can achieve, right? Ah, okay, fine. This is fine, but uh, this is not exactly correct right now. Let me just put this return answer. This is not correct because it's not uh, having the base case first of all. So let me add a base case. If i is n minus one and j is n minus one, then simply return a i j because now you have reached the destination and you can't achieve anything else uh, otherwise this is fine but still uh, what if you are at the last column then you can't you have only one choice to go down you can't go further right so we will just uh, see that case also so if this case is only when i is less than n minus 1 and j is less than n minus 1 right otherwise if i is in minus one so this means that we are at the last row then we have no other choice but to take aij and then go to the right which is i comma j plus one and else <clears throat> now we know that we are at the now we know that j is in minus one so this means that we are at the top uh, rightmost column so we can't go right we have to go down 
and in this case the answer will be a i j plus i have to go down so i plus one comma j that is the only choice i have so now this looks complete and it should work it's a recursive solution let's just run this and see what is the answer it should be 73 oh yeah we are getting 73 awesome and why it's 73 because if you will just go back to the matrix oops yeah so the maximum that you can achieve in this case is if you will go from 1 to 5 then 9 then 13 14 15 and 16 this is the biggest and if you will add this up it is 73 so the output is correct but we have not used dynamic programming until now but it's really very easy to plug in dynamic programming into a recursive solution and how you do this is <coughs> so if you have visited this cell then you will simply return the answer okay otherwise i'm storing the reference over here and <clears throat> so if visited just return the answer otherwise mark this as visited that yeah you are visiting this uh, cell and let uh, so what i'm doing over here essentially means if I change answer, it will directly reflect the value stored in DPI comma J. All right, it's nothing else. So I want to store my answer in DPI comma J and I feel it very long to write DPI J again and again over here. So just to save that effort, I'm uh, storing a reference over here. Yeah, now this looks good. And if you will run this again, it will again show 73. But this time dynamic programming has been plugged and now right now the n and m were just 4 comma 4 but now this solution will even work for n up to as high as 1000. Uh, obviously it will not work if uh, you had not introduced this dynamic programming memorization in the end that we have done because then it would be just a lot of pre-work the machine has to do and that's how dynamic programming solves a lot number of problems. So uh, what I will be why I chose this problem is I will be making one more video about why some people are not able to climb up in the realm of competitive programming because it's just not about learning dynamic programming or topics like that but it's also about how you think and based on this problem uh, I think you, your mind should also think about other scenarios which I will be covering in the next video so I hope you like this video if you found this uh, helpful just make sure that you hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already uh, i will be resuming uh, and making a lot of videos now so i hope you enjoy it thanks